Hi, how are you? It's Trapsimir, and welcome back to our adventures in Azeroth. Last episode, we did the dungeon, the Slave Pence, and today, we're going to continue our journey in Zangermarsh. First, we're going to have a chat with Harun. Each day is a Diaphanous Wings. Living in such a remote location has taught us to make use of everything available. Of course, you have to learn to stop thinking about where some of these materials come from first. I've found that the wings of the Umbraglo stingers are very helpful for waterproofing. They're strong, thin, and flexible. Harun chuckles. I see the look on your face. Like I said, it takes time to get used to the idea. If you're going to be out and about, would you mind bringing me some of the wings? Be kind to those less. All right, gotta get these wings. Blessings upon you. Umbraph and eel fillets. It's good to see another fresh face here when Halrun and I first came to Telrador. We were the only outsiders, but that seems like a lifetime ago. Still, we try to welcome newcomers and ensure that there's always enough food and supplies. We can never fully repay the kindness of the Telrador anchorites, but we can follow their example and extend it to others. If you would like to help, the nearby lakes are populated with a fish called the Umbraphenil, whose meat is a staple of our diet. Dionysaka. Okay. We got a couple of quests to the south. Looks like over here you can get these wings. Pretty much get these wings everywhere. All the eel fillets seem to be in the Umbraffin Lake. Um, I guess we'll check out this Blessings one. Upon you. Telrador has seen more change in the last 20 years than it did in prior centuries. I cannot complain. Really deadly for the world has changed far more in that time. The light has brought me friends and companions I could not have met as a cloistered priest. Learn what you can of the past in your time here. It will help you understand where your journey is leading you. The Orobar Harborage. As you know, many of Telrador's inhabitants are refugees from the war that decimated the Draenei. It is my goal to maintain Telrador as a safe haven for all of our allies in this struggle. There are some who desire to join us, but feel they are not ready yet. We owe them whatever help we can provide, Squilly Diddly. A group of broken under the leadership of Ikuti have taken shelter in the ruins of an old temple to the northwest of Serpent Lake. Seek them out and extend your hand in friendship to them. Be kind to those less the Bohamu Ruins. Before my people were decimated by the orcs, Telrador served as a retreat for Draenei anchorites and spiritualists. A small order of anchorites and vindicators maintained a number of shrines in this region. During the war, we lost contact with the anchorites assigned to the shrines, particularly the Bohamu Temple to the southwest. I've heard reports that a tribe of lost ones has settled in that area and may be using the ruins. Visit the Bohamu Ruins and tell me what you find there. Alright guys, well that's a, a decent amount of quests there, for now. I think that's what we'll, uh, we'll stick with. And it looks like we gotta go up here. So I don't know what we'll do first. Maybe we'll head over to Umbraffin Lake first. We'll take out all these fish. We gotta, then we'll check out this ruins. And then we'll make our way north to this uh, new location. Yeah, hopefully everybody's doing great today. I'm doing pretty damn well. Got our dryer fixed up. We don't have to hang the clothes outside anymore. <laughs> it's always nice. It changes so much the like when you dry your clothes compared to when you hang them outside. Like the towels are so rough, the ones that dry outside, they're like really rough towels. It's not like the soft feeling that you're used to. All right, so I guess we'll head down to the lake. We're already here. I think someone is already slaying these uh, these insects. Too bad we're kind of missing out on all the wings. Wonder how we'll do here though in the Embraffin Lake. The thing is we got water walking, so just do that. And 
Hopefully we can find some of these uh, eels. Oh, there we go. The eel found us. Even better. There's two of them. Get him. There's another one. They're all coming. <laughs> this would be brutal if this is actually having somebody would just be toast. I get paralyzed by these things. There we go. We got one fillet. Where's the other ones? There's another guy down here fighting them. Gotta watch out. Last time we were in the water, these DKs were... Oh, that's our wolves. Where did our wolves go? Oh, there's another one. Get that one. Oh, they're gonna disappear. Gotta catch our breath, though. Just wanna know if I, uh... Looted that, yeah. Okay, well, we can't drink here, so I'm gonna get to the island and we'll have a drink. That's another thing we need to do. Let's get uh, some more filtered drainic water. We only have 17 left. And I don't know if I've shown anybody this, but there's uh, an add on that I had for a long time on this character. And I wrote a story about uh, Squidly Diddly on this, like, uh, on this Let's Play. It's pretty damn old. And it was pretty much what this add-on is. It's a RP add-on. It's called Total RP3. And pretty much it gives uh, your character a little bit of a backstory and dialogue, so if somebody wants to come up and RP with you, they can check out your, uh, your backstory and then kind of, like, run off of it, run off it and you know, maybe do a little bit of an RP scenario with you. You can actually see, like, other RP players in the directory. Right now we have Romai and Ronald Crump. But as you um, go to, like, main cities and stuff, you'll start seeing more people. There's actually a decent community on this server that uses total RP3. Because this is a, an RP server. All right, so let's check out the story quick. I just wanted to show you guys, just to catch anybody up who's missed it. I just want to read it again, because I haven't uh, paid attention to the RP part of, the, of this Let's Play in a long time. Here's his directory information. He's, he's a Draenei. His class is Shaman. His age is 9,000. His uh, eye color's light blue. We got kinked. <laughs> That was awesome. I deserved that. <laughs> oh, man. I've done that so many times. Well, he's level 70, so whatever. But I've been doing that on the mage a little bit. I ganked a couple of people yesterday. All right, so yeah, back to what we were saying. His height is uh, 182 centimeters, six, six foot. Body shape, muscular. Birthplace, Draenor. Residence, the Exodar. Seat of the Naru. Relationship status is widowed. We're gonna get ganked again? What a loser. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, you just gotta have the run back. Buddy, we're at the friggin... Nice. It's awesome that we're at the graveyard. Kinda sucks at the same time, because he can just keep ganking us at the graveyard. But yeah, he's got a... Uh, he's chaotic... He's, he's more uh, chaotic than lawful. He's uh, vindictive. He's selfish. <laughs> I don't know, I picked these. He's, he's truthful. He's uh, a mix of Drantle, but he can be brutal. He's a little bit more of a renegade than a paragon. He breaks the rules. And he's... Uh, more impulsive than cautious. So he goes with his gut. 
So let's uh, check out the story here that I wrote over a year ago, I think now. Squidly Dilly was born on Draenor and was raised to follow the light. During his time on Draenor, he trained diligently as a paladin. To hopefully one day become a protector of the light. An unfortunate event occurred where him and his people were attacked by the Burning Legion and the Orcs of Draenor. He really fought along long and hard against the Orcs, but he knew that the Draenei could not withstand their brutal attacks for much longer. Found the leader of the Draenei formulated a plan to escape Draenor by getting his people into the Exodar so that they could fly off in search of a new home. Squilly Diddly chose to follow Velen onto the Exodar, but many of the Draenei, including his family members, chose to stay in Shatrath as a sacrifice so that some of the Draenei could escape. While on the Exodar, he contemplated his past decisions of becoming a paladin and following the light. He began to believe that the light failed the Draenei on Draenor and that they should follow a new path. Eventually, the Exodar crashed on an unknown planet. Squidly Diddly survived and saw this as a sign and an opportunity to follow a new path. While on the unknown planet, Squidly Diddly chose the path of the Shaman and believes that with the power of the elements, he can one day get revenge on the Burning Legion and the Orcs. And I guess that's what he's currently doing. He came back to Outland and he's getting revenge on the demons and the Orcs. I honestly forgot that story. I didn't know that... What a loser. This guy's really camping me hard, man. Oh my gosh. This guy's so sweaty. <laughs> What level is this guy? 70 Death Knight? I wonder why he doesn't gank the 70. It's kind of sad. you gank him. Do something. Well, he's having fun, so we gotta let him have his fun. Yeah. And yeah, you can like scroll over people, and if they have the RP add on, it'll say. And then it'll pretty much gives you kind of uh, an idea if they're willing to RP or not. And I, and I, I never really RP'd before. So I did this on my hunter and my shaman because I was on an RP server and I just wanted to try it and see what it was like. And I will admit I got a little bit more of an RP experience, well, way more of an RP experience on my hunter. I actually joined an RP guild full of dwarves and I actually got to uh, participate in a couple of RP events which was actually really fun. And it was something I've never done in the game. I recommend trying it. It's not bad. The cool communities. And we we didn't do anything like, you know, that people ex like think RP is. Like, oh, we didn't go to Goldshire or anything like that. But we did, uh... We, we did, like, an initiation into the guild. And we traveled around Dunmoreau. We went to the, the highest part of Dunmoreau. And that's how we got uh, into the guild. And then at the end, we went down, and there's like this, uh, it's like this hallway, and at the end, it's just like, it's like a glitched out world. It's like a spot that you're not supposed to be in the game. And if you go through the door, you load into Ironforge. And that was the end. I've never been there before. It was a really well thought out RP event. But yeah, I couldn't really find any RP train eye guilds on the server. I will admit I probably didn't look hard enough, but I don't think there is any. I think dwarfs are probably the most popular, probably humans. 
Night Elves. Drain Eye are probably one of the least popular. Or RP, I would assume. Yeah, I'll keep uh, the add-on on. We'll see if we can run into some people, maybe have a funny RP event. Gotta get to an island here, we'll use a little water walking, hopefully we don't get ganked. But that was so sad, like that ro- Is he ganking him? He is! Oh my gosh, dude. He ganked him. There he is. I'm gonna- oh, I'm getting attacked now, damn it. I'm just gonna res this guy. Then he ganks me, and he knew I was going to res him. <laughs> Why did I even run back there? <laughs> oh, now... Okay, good. We're still close. Yeah, you didn't even need to get rezzed. Oh, there's a, a horde player. But yeah, maybe that's what this guy's. Uh... Why doesn't he gank him? Like, why didn't you kill him? Well, I guess he can. He's like low health, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna res, buddy. And then we'll try to get out of here. I gotta walk across here. <laughs> it's our only way out of here. He actually has to swim through here. Well, he doesn't really. You can just fly. He 100% has a flying mount. But whatever. This is maybe a little bit safer. Oh, this guy has the add-on. Night Elf Bard. He's a civilian of bad habits. So if we go to the add-on, kind of show you. So there we go. We've seen... He's a Night Elf Bard. Seven foot. Body shape is Grandades. <laughs> La Bay. And, like, he doesn't have any notes or descriptions. I think we can leave notes on him. Yeah, no description. So, so, a lot of them don't have a description, but I guess that's so, uh, kind of just introduce yourself and, like, you write notes on the person and then, and then, yeah, you know what I mean? And then you can say something, like, we could write a note about, uh, Res Tim after getting ganked by a 70 rogue undead. And there we go. We got a note on him. So if I ever see him again, I can be like, hey, do you remember that? And then maybe we can, you know, create a little storyline. If I can get the rogue's name, we can create a little RP event about me and him getting revenge on that rogue. And leveling up to 70, and there we go. There's a, there's a little story. A little RP event there. And that's why RP PvP is cool. Like, I like... I like the random PvP scenarios. I don't mind that we got camped there. It's a part of it's a part of WoW. Well, it's a part of PvP server WoW. You're gonna get camped sometimes. Wrong place, wrong time type type stuff. And uh, yeah, you just gotta deal with it. And yeah, if we get ganked again, it is what it is. <laughs> Nothing we can do. But we'll remember him. Check my comment. What happened to me? I have to go pretty far up. Yeah, his name is Nexus. Nexus. So we'll write that down. His name is Nex 
Texas. <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Such a slimy name. Nexus. <laughs> but yeah. That's why RP's kind of fun. That's another reason why I like Grobulus. Is it just has an extra... Like, layer... Of, of wow in it. Like, having RP makes it interesting. Just more you can do on the server. I heard Final Fantasy has a pretty serious RP community. I think that's probably got like the biggest one out of any MMO. And there's a little uh, bar here. I'll show you guys it. Shows your can like show like your uh, your helmet or your cloak and click it on and off. It's cool for RP. Player normal character in character so it says I'm in character so if someone comes up to me they can expect that I'm in character so I'll try to remember that open the NPC speeches frame language common so yeah you can change it to out of character or in character so people know how to uh, react to you Yeah, it's a fun little add-on. And I recommend trying RP. If you've never done it before. You might like it. Who knows? I'll be honest, like, I don't... I'm not, like... I don't, like, RP... I don't, like, love RP, but, like... It was a cool little thing to try out for a little bit. Like, I've always been more of, like, an endgame raider type of guy. It's mostly what I do in WoW. And also leveling alts. It's something else I like to do as well. Fuck the mounts. It's mostly been my thing in WoW. But I can see why people like RP, you know? Because it does add, like, a community element to the game. And that's something WoW's kind of been lacking. Especially in retail. But I think the emergence of classics sort of brought it back a little bit. Alright, so we're done with those eels. Now we just uh, gotta hope we don't get ganked again. Oh, Undead Warlock. Now we gotta get these diaphanous wings. We need to make our way over to the Bahomu ruins. And once we get up here, I guess we'll, uh, I'll think about, um, probably queuing up for a dungeon. Maybe we'll do a little bit of, uh, the underbog. Or mana tombs, whatever one we get. Not really too picky. I don't really mind not doing them under box. We don't have all the quests for it yet. And we will eventually get them because I am going to try to clear all the quests here in Zanger Marsh. On the shaman. Alright, so let's make our way over there. Hopefully we can find s some more of these bugs. Hey, yeah, guys, they announced a new set of video cards. The 40 series was announced today. And the price came out. And it is ridiculous. So... They're going to arrive on October 12th with a GeForce RTX 4090, but it comes with an obscenely high price tag of $1599 USD. Pretty much $1600 USD. And that is insane. You can literally buy an entire computer 
with like a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse <laughs> for like for that price and that's that's MSRP I think too so it's gonna be even more expensive than that most likely and then they're coming out with the RTX 4080 in November two models a 16 gigabyte model that'll go for 1200 bucks and a 12 gigabyte model that'll go for 900 but features a decrease in the number of total CUDA cores I honestly don't know what that is <laughs> but I guess that uh, helps your video card out Go south here. But yeah, I was looking at the the price to performance ratio. I'm interested to when these video cards get uh you know all tested, and then people give them a price per, to performance ratio. I'm interested to see where they land. They're obviously going to be the top of the line cars, but they are pretty damn expensive. So I don't think they'll be uh, in the top 10 for price to performance. I heard the RTX 3060 is like a, a solid 3060 and a 3060 Ti. It's like a solid price to performance ratio for a, a high end card or an RTX card if you're looking for one of those. And then AMD has some pretty good cards, too. I might switch to AMD. We'll have to see. I've never had any problems, though, with uh, Intel and NVIDIA and all that. So. It's going to be tough for me to switch. <laughs> but we'll see. Maybe I will in the future. The thing is, I, I don't really need to. My uh, 1070 is doing well. My computer's doing well. But I think in a couple of years, it's probably going to start having problems, maybe. I hope not, but we'll see. I was just checking out my card, the GTX 1070. It's not even in the top 50 for price to performance ratio. I guess the performance is just not that great anymore. It used to be, it was up there when I first purchased it. And, um, yeah, I guess it's fallen off quite a bit. Because it's at its lowest price now, probably, and, uh, it's not moving any lower. What I hear people recommending about these 40s, like 40 series, people are just saying, buy, uh, if you're looking for a new card, just buy 30 series cards off eBay. Supposedly there's going to be a lot out there. And, um... Yeah, get prop. Hopefully, get a good price and hopefully get a good card. It's the last time I I built my computer last time, and I was thinking about just doing a pre-build the next time, just so I don't have to, you know, deal with that stuff. It does take like a couple hours to set it up. You gotta kind of enjoy the process. But the thing is, you do save a decent amount of money, especially if you're buying some of your parts off eBay. But the thing is, I didn't do it clean. Like the wiring isn't <laughs> isn't well done, and supposedly, like these guys, they. When you get a pre-built computer, you, usually they do it right, and it's uh, it's it's clean. My wires are all like, it's not efficient at all. But but I did it myself, so yeah, that's that's a plus. Yeah, I think 2023 will be uh, potentially a good time to get back into buying a, a gaming computer. 
So I think the prices of those, those 30 series will probably go down. There's, they made a ton of them, and there's a bunch of them on the market. So just looking at eBay today, and some of them are being sold for like $200 under uh, the prices that like Newegg or, or Best Buy is selling them at. All right, so let's head north, guys. The thing is, like, I don't even need a 30 series. <laughs> like, that's the number. That's that's one thing. But if I'm going to buy a card, I'm, I'll probably... I usually just buy, like what I said before, just price to performance. Let's see if I can get a good deal. Because could you, could you imagine buying a 4090? And yeah, you got warranties and all that. But imagine the card just messes up. That's, like, devastating. <laughs> like, uh, for a Canadian, that's a $2,000 plus card. And then there's these comments I keep reading about them, like... People saying like they're gonna heat their house with it, or <laughs> so I don't know. Which is kind of uh, funny. Like uh, supposedly it takes up that much energy, but I, I've heard that they supposedly run well. Like they're pretty energy efficient, but I don't know. That's what Buddy said in the in the keynote. But who knows? Did you imagine they like heat up your whole computer? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. And yeah, supposedly it's uh, the 4090 is two to four times faster than the 3090 Ti, which is like the best card out at the moment. And then the 4080 is two to time two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But the thing is, is like, how many, I wonder how many games there are where you can actually utilize this card to where it's like, worth it, you know? I know for me it's not worth it. I play WoW. Like, it's not, not worth that at all. The only thing that I kind of want is just a better, uh, it's a better processor so my videos render render at a faster speed because it does take time some of these videos take like three hours to render and then I have an, another computer where they so that's a lot slower and it takes like seven hours the cool thing about rendering you know you can just go to sleep and videos just render So we're running out of water here. This is a great place to come to for these, uh... For these bog flare needlers. So we'll just send the dogs on all of them. Oh, they're going this way. Follow the decks. Probably gonna out level this zone. We're already out leveling it. But I do want to finish it. I said I would. This will be the zone we focus on. Oh, 
and then we'll probably get a chance to, to go through another zone, I hope. But uh, the leveling's super quick. Like, my Paladin's almost 68. EK's already getting up there. It's gonna be 70 pretty soon. And then the Shaman is gonna be tanging behind a little bit. Those the Ellie Shaman's gonna be really fun in uh, Wrath. And a lot of pe people think like, yeah, they're gonna be bad and not that great in PvE, but I think they will surprise some people. But they're really good in PvP. Like, those are really damn good in PvP. a comp called LSD. It's a lock shaman druid. Like a resto druid with a warlock and a shaman. So it's really good in wrath. Hex really made shaman a, an awesome class in PvP. It needed a, a CC like that. It was kind of a shame that they didn't have it in TBC. We don't have Hex yet, do we? We'll eventually get it, I think. we get it soon. Hey, we're, yeah, I'm, under, I'm pretty sure that you get Hex <laughs> in Wrath. I remember Hexes. They gotta be in Wrath. I just think we haven't unlocked it yet. Maybe we'll go over here, see if we can find some more of these... these bugs. Need one more of these stingers or wings. I guess it might be a good time to queue up for queue up for one of these three dungeons. See if we can get into one. How's our bag space getting kind of bad? But we're going to be in a town soon, so shouldn't be too bad. I guess we'll just go to the village. Deal with the bugs later. Now what are we queued as? There we go. This whole list again. Right, let's turn in this quest to a cootie. Light. Must remember the light. Welcome to the Orbor Orbor Harborage, friend. Have you nothing to fear here? We are broken, but we are not your enemies. I am Ikuti of the Kurani, a group of broken who desire to reestablish ties with our Draenei brothers and their newfound allies. If Anchorite Ahun counts you as a friend, then you may prove trustworthy. Please forgive my, my wariness, Draenei, but it is often all that stands between my people and death. You are welcome to shelter among us, and perhaps our mutual trust will grow. Okay, so he's got a bunch of quests. First thing I want to do, though, is I want to find the inn here. Because he... If I find the innkeeper, supposedly they got the... They got the stuff I want. Which is the drain I... Which is the filtered drainic water. I wonder if we have to keep going up, or... I guess we have to keep going up here. Where are this heads to? This goes to Blade's Edge. Oh, there we go. Alright, so there we go. We found the inn. We keep her curb. We can't talk to him? <laughs> oh my gosh. Why not? Because of our reputation here? That's a... That's sad, man. Can't even make do business? Oh man, this... This Angermar sucks. So, like, at the end here, you can't buy it either. I go here, I don't have a high enough wrap. 
Oh, it's too bad, man. Well, it's good to know. At least we got the flight point here. I don't know if I'm going to pick up any quests. We'll probably just get this last bug. And we'll go back and turn in these quests. And then I got I got to get some waters. Because this is just getting brutal. Probably by like 100. Probably going to have to head all the way back to Honor Hold. There we go. We got invited. Damn it, they're already in a group. What's this for? I was kind of hoping I'd get a little bit of time. I don't got any water. They got a mage? Yes. They got a mage. So we don't need to get water. Can I say hi? I don't know why I don't have party in chat on here. Yeah, I have party chat. What the heck? There we go. We got our final wing. Let's hurt out. What dungeon this is for? I think it's, uh... Yeah, it's an Aachen Dune one. Cool. I think we're gonna do, uh, Mana Tombs, guys. I'm yeah, just showing you guys. You he doesn't sell us anything. May your days be long. Maybe it's because our rep's too low. This kind of looks cool, though, this little effect. You only got six seconds. There we go, I actually got... There we go. Alright, guys, so let's turn these quests in. Hopefully the mage gives me waters. If he doesn't, then <laughs> we're, we're in trouble. Okay, so let's get rid of all this stuff. Safe journey. Okay. I have forest wings. Did you manage to gather the any diaphanous wings? Thank you, Sweetie Dilly. Halrun smiles sympathetically. At least you don't have to clean them. That's the worst job of the lot. But once it's done, you'd never know they were attached to a giant insect. Dionys Haka. Greetings, friend. Braff and eel fillets. Have you any fish to contribute to our stores? Thank you for your help, Swilly Dilly. Your generosity will not be forgotten. May your days be long and your hardships. All right, guys. Let's, uh, I guess we're gonna have to accept this. Don't want them to wait any longer. Yeah, that is going to be the end of today's episode, guys. Next episode, we will be in the Manitoums. As always, thanks for watching. Keep your heads up. Later.